Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for another preview video of week two of the Jaguars Revenge Tour. Of course, the first stop in the Jags Revenge Tour didn't end out the way we wanted it to, but I think this week is going to be a much more winnable game, not in the division. We'll see how things pan out. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us not waste any more time. I am Treeb from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus New York Jets week number four preview. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, before we hop into this preview video, I want to let you all know that Saturday we're going to be debuting a new series here on the channel. I don't know if I want to call it the Treep Talks Podcast or if I want to just call it uh, the Jaguars News Podcast. We will be going live here on Saturday around 4 p.m. Pacific time, and we're going to be talking everything Jaguars and everything in between as well. I'm going to be taking questions in the chat. I'm going to have a call in so you guys can call in with some questions and everything like that. It should be a good time. I enjoy going live um, and interacting with my subscribers, so that should be a good time. So make sure y'all stop by in the stream. Anyway, now let's get down to business. Let's talk about the game at hand, the Jags taking on the Jets. Now, as you know, probably as of right now, there's a glare in these lights. I don't really like it. This is what happens when you do videos a little later than you usually do. The lighting is a little bit more messed up than I would like it to be. But hopefully you guys are still here listening. The Jets are coming off the big loss against the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield. The first uh, win for the Browns in 600 days. Some might say that will influence them to go really, really hard, but this Jaguar team is no Cleveland Browns team. Not to say the Browns are necessarily a garbage team, but this team is definitely on another level. And if you want to talk losses that are going to affect a team, uh, I think a division loss to the Tennessee Titans is going to affect the Jags just a little bit more than a non-divisional game uh, between the Jets and the Browns. So... What we need to do first things first in this game is we need to get last week out of our heads. I think that's a lot of... I don't think the players have this loss in their head as much as us the fans do. But I think as fans, we kind of need to get that out of our head. We need to think this is a new week, this is a new team that we're facing, a new game plan. Uh, we're going to see how we fare against the Jets this week. And honestly, with the offense they have and the defense they have that is not necessarily star-studded, I think the Jags are going to be able to uh, expose some weaknesses of the Jets. And we can't do that if we still have last week's loss in our heads. You know, everybody worrying, oh, how is Bortles going to do? Is Bortles actually the guy? But then again, everybody questions if Bortles is the guy each and every week. But that's a big thing for this week is we need to get the loss of last week out of our head. It's a new week. It's a new day. It's a new time for the Jags facing the Jets uh, at home. It's definitely, definitely a winnable game. The Jets are playing a rookie quarterback in Sam Darnold, so if there ever was a time for Jalen Ramsey or A.J. Boye to get an interception is this week. We thought it was last week when Blaine Gabbert was playing, but Blaine ended up getting pulled uh, in the second quarter for concussion protocol. So, you know, Sam Darnold is a guy that uh, hasn't really showed too much as a rookie quarterback. He is... I believe they've won one game. I don't know. I they might they might they they might even be winless. Not a hundred percent sure. But this uh, Jets team is definitely you know a lower tier team that the Jags should be able to beat, especially with this rookie quarterback with not a lot of experience going up against one of the uh, top rated defenses in the NFL. So let's see if AJ Boye or Jalen Ramsey can step up, get that interception. Same with guys like DJ Hayden as well. I love I'm loving to see how this Jaguar defense does against the Jets. They're definitely a start uh, for fantasy this week. I think a lot of big plays are going to be made on the defensive side of the ball and even some scores as well. So Jalen Ramsey and AJ Boye, DJ Hayden, the secondary, really keep their keep your eyes on them because this might be a big week for them getting some interceptions uh, causing some turnovers and really causing some havoc for this rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold. Now, Leonard Fournette is set to play this week, his first game back since week one of the season, and uh, we'll see how that plays a factor. Plays a factor in the game planning and plays a factor in how the Jags are going to uh, obviously call this game. 
Another thing that I'm interested in with uh, Leonard coming back in full force is how are we going to be using TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant? You know, are we going to be using him, you know, sparingly like we did against the Giants when Leonard was in there? Or are we going to use him a little bit more, kind of shake up the game plan? This is the thing that I always think about is these three running backs who all do three different things exceptionally well. Corey Grant, unfortunately, is coming off of a bad week, but TJ Yeldon's had a great year. Uh, obviously, he's won my Offensive Player of the Year, I mean, of the week, two times, which is the most out of any player. So... You know, TJ Yeldon's a guy that definitely wants to be on the field and definitely can make plays, which was a thing that I kind of doubted him for uh, heading into the season. And the running back outlook, I was talking about how uh, TJ Yeldon doesn't have that big play ability, but this year he's definitely showing that he has that ability to make those plays. Corey Grant has always been electrifying, has always done, you know, those types of things well. So we'll see how they involve TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant this week uh, with Leonard Fournette officially coming back into the game maybe they'll go back to those two back sets you know keep everybody guessing it's more of a guessing game on the two back set is tj yeldon and Corey grant at least in my opinion but we'll see we'll see how tj yeldon and Corey grant uh are effectively used in this game against the jets now everybody let us take a big step back let us take a big step back and not forget what blake bortles did against the patriots let us not forget that uh, this Jets defense isn't spectacular. When the defense isn't too great, Blake Bortles usually shows out. The Giants weren't too great, as well as the Patriots, and Blake ended up having good games in both of those. The Titans defense is low-key. They're good. And obviously that's something that's going to have to change in Blake's game is he's going to have to go up against these elite defenses and you know play his ass off. But this Jets defense, I think Blake is going to have a heyday throwing the football. Like I said in my recap video of the Titans, um, I think we should be putting Blake on a pitch count, you know, limited throws, 20 to 25 attempts. But those 20 to 25 attempts really need to uh, make something. You know, he needs to make a play. He needs to show out and show everybody again why he is the franchise quarterback, which he is, 100% is. And a lot of people that were saying, oh, the boat, we're riding with five, you know, he's our quarterback, are the same people that, you know, are right now on the internet saying that, Oh, Blake Bortles can't do this. I knew we should have got a quarterback. We should have traded for Teddy Bridgewater. Make up your damn mind. You know, if you're going to ride with Blake, ride with Blake. If you're not, then hop off the fucking wagon. Because Blake Bortles is our quarterback, and he is going to be that guy until 2021. And that's just the way of things. Um, I, So I think we all need to take a deep breath, step back, and really let Blake Bortles uh, do his thing. And really let him prove himself and show why he is this team's franchise quarterback. Now, nothing on New York's offense scares me not like nothing nothing that's why i think this defense is gonna have a great game it's first really fantastic game of the season uh not to say they haven't held hold, held their own or hold, held things down uh last week they didn't cause a turnover but only held the titans to nine points unfortunately that was enough points to get the victory but to be able to go out there and only hold teams to field goals is a big thing perfect Bemba don't break defense against the Titans unfortunately the Jags offense couldn't capitalize and put more points on the board but this defense I think should have a heyday this week and I think I expect more sacks I expect Yannick and Gawkway to go out there I see a tweet today and I couldn't agree with it more you know Malik Jackson went out there and said we're gonna go 16-0 unfortunately it couldn't happen Yannick and Gawkway goes out there says he's the best edge rusher in the league he needs to get a couple of sacks. It's week four. He he doesn't have a sack yet. I believe he only has two tackles on the season. You know, guys that have that mantra and guys that think that they're the best, they need to go out there and prove it. And yet, not to say Yannick Ngakwe is not as good as he says he is, but as of right now, he has not had a sack on the season, and that's something that great edge rushers should have uh, by this time right now is a sack, and Yannick Ngakwe unfortunately doesn't have that. Jalen Ramsey also has gone out saying that him and AJ are the best duo in the world, which I do wholeheartedly wholeheartedly believe that they are but they both don't have an interception yet this year whether that be because people are afraid to test them they have tested them before whether that be you know soft zone coverage though but one-on-one -on -one, you know no one's really kind of taking a crack at them but they should have an interception by now you know they should be baiting these quarterbacks and be able to have at least one turnover by now and this is the week they should go out and get it i was hoping that would be last week but this is the week to do it uh the titans team is a little bit uh, different that Titans game was a divisional game you know people struggle in divisional games everybody does whether that be you know the AFC North the NFC South you know everybody just beats up on each other and that's no different in the AFC South especially with the teams that are 
design here. You know, young quarterbacks in every single team. And, you know, uh, with the Jags, they have a great defense. The Titans have a great defense. The Texans are kind of on the brink of having a pretty good defense and obviously have a pretty good offense if Deshaun Watson could kind of find himself uh, again this year and kind of prevent a sophomore slump. So, you know, everybody in this division is going to beat up on each other. That's just inevitable. But let's go out there against the Jets. Let's make some plays and let's do some things uh, on defense to make sure this offense doesn't score any touchdowns. <clears throat> And last but certainly not least, let's make the most out of red zone opportunities. Blake Bortles, that's where he's his be that's where he's at his best, at least from last year heading into this year. Only throwing one interception last year in the red zone. Let's get some touchdowns. Though I love seeing Josh Lambeau kicking field goals because he's the most handsome man on the field, and whatever he trots out there gets me happy, and it kind of gets my bird going. But, you know, uh, that's just personal preference. But as far as a team goes, y'all need to score touchdowns in those red zone opportunities. And with the uh, team we're playing, with the opportunity that we're given here at home, I think that it's that opportunity that we need to make happen. And we're going to have a lot of opportunities in the red zone this game, I think. And we're going to have a lot of opportunities to score touchdowns. So that's something that we need to capitalize on. Capitalize on those opportunities to get six and to not get three. I think when we start playing, you know, those teams necessarily kind of like a new england in new england we went out there we scored touchdowns we didn't take field goals we played teams like pittsburgh we need to score touchdowns not take field goals and even though this is just the jets and maybe we can just get by and kick field goals i think this is a team uh this is where the jags need to kind of put their foot on the gas they play the chiefs next week field goals aren't going to do it against this team against that team but i think our defense are going to be able our defense is going to be able to kind of step up in the matchup with patrick mahomes but this is what I'm saying. We need to be able to make the most out of our red zone opportunities. And when we're in the red zone, score touchdowns and not just take field goals. And that was my week number four preview for the Jacksonville Jaguars versus New England. I mean, versus New York Jets. So what'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trevon Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley. Follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.